Hey guys, we're back for the last installment on photosynthesis, and we're going to be talking about variations of the idea. Uh, not only am I going to mention a few um, things that may happen during photosynthesis, but I'm also going to talk about the difference in C3, C4, and CAM plants. All right, now the first thing that plants had to overcome when they come to land was how to control water. On hot days, plants will actually close their stomata, which are stomata are pores or openings in their leaf, and as you can see with this picture at the bottom, this is what it looks like. This is a stomata, and it has two guard cells. It has a guard cell on each side, and that guard cell controls the opening and closing of the stomata, or the stoma, if you talk about a singular. Now, if you open it up, it's able to lose water. If it closes it, then it keeps water in. So this is an adaptation plants have whenever they move the land. But it does cause problems, because when the stomata is closed, then you have an oxygen buildup from the light reaction, and carbon dioxide is not available for the Calvin cycle. So this really causes a lot of problems. So think about it. When the stomata is open, you can have water leave. You can have carbon dioxide come in if there's too much. Carbon dioxide then can go to the chloroplast. You can have oxygen that's made leave exchange. You can have oxygen leave the chloroplast, etc. But when you close it, all right, what happens is you eliminate water leaving the plant and entering the plant, and you also eliminate the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen. This could present a problem. So, just remember that of why plants have to keep their, their stomata open. The second little anomaly is an inefficiency of Rubisco co uh, coenzyme. Um, if you remember, this is the one that uh, fixed carbon in the Calvin cycle. Now, Rubisco it will, loves to bind with carbon dioxide, but if oxygen is present, it is attracted more to oxygen than it is carbon dioxide, and this is a bad thing. Kind of a summary here. If carbon dioxide is present in abundance, then RUVP um, is hooked on to the carbon dioxide by this Rubisco enzyme, and everything goes like it should in photosynthesis. But what if you have a high amount of oxygen present? Then the Rubisco starts to bind oxygen to RUVP, and you actually have a breakdown of sugar. You have what's called photorespiration. So if you have a lot of oxygen presence, you have photorespiration. If you have a lot of carbon dioxide present, you have photosynthesis, which is what we're, we're shooting for. So if you have carbon dioxide, the cycle goes just like we've always seen, you know, that we saw in the, in the um, Calvin cycle. And you can see that G3Ps are made, glucose is made, everything is good. This is called a C3 plant. It's called a C3 plant because of the three carbons. All right. Now, what if the Calvin cycle has a high oxygen content? Then what happens is oxygen binds to the five carbon Rubisco, and but by the being by the boom, you have carbon dioxide being released, and you know ATPs are produced. This is called um, photorespiration. Now, what's the impact of this photorespiration? There's really four things. The Calvin cycle stops. You have a, a loss of carbon that is needed for the Calvin cycle, the carbon dioxide. You get no ATPs produced. You get no glucose produced, which is plant food. And, you know, the plant has to figure out a way to overcome this or it can't survive. So how it has done this, plants have done this over time, there's two ways, C4 plants and CAM plants. C4 plants have actually separated the Calvin cycle and carbon fixation into two different places. Uh, so they physically have separated where two different cells does it. And instead of using Rubisco, they use another enzyme called PEP carboxylase to do it, which has an affinity for carbon dioxide. So that's the first thing is C4 plants physically separate the two, which makes it go a little bit better. CAM plants actually do it at different times of the day. Um, they fix carbon um, at night time and and they do the rest of it during the daytime. So they actually do it different times during the day. And here's some examples on the left, like corn is a C4 plant. And okay, just to summarize C4 plants a little bit for you, it's a, it's a better way of capturing carbon dioxide, especially in hot, dry climates. And they use that PEP carboxylase instead of Rubisco in order to do it. Now, they usually have their closed stomachs a lot because it's a hot, dry place, and they're trying to avoid... Um, the release of water, so you have an oxygen build up, so they have to be adapted where they want their calendar cycle to still be going. Okay, 
so if you look at the anatomy, how C3 and C4 plants are different, I told you a C4 plant actually changes the anatomy. You can see over here where the cells are that do that have chloroplast in them. The mesophyll layer actually goes like this, where in the C3 plant, they're usually found right at the top. So they have a different places of where the cells are that does this process. So that's how they get around it. Now the, the cam plants are next, and the cam plants is another adaption for hot, dry climates. I realize these both would be adaptions for hot, dry environments because they're trying to conserve water. They're closing their stomata, which means the oxygen would build up because of the light reaction taking place. So basically how they do it is they close their stomata during the day, but they open their stomata at night. So they actually do carbon fixation uh, at one time, and they do um, camel cycle at another. So they... they they do it at two different times during the day. And this is like your succulents, your cactus, your pineapples. All right. And it's just some pictures of some canned plants in case you didn't know. And, you know, just a side note, pineapples, when I went to Hawaii, uh, the first time I knew that pineapples grew in a plant, not in a tree. But anyway. Um, so C4 and CAM summary. If you look real quick, you know, C4 is going to physically separate it into two different places. So different cells do carbon fixation and and uh, calvin cycle. CAM plants do it at two different times during the day. So one happens at night and one happens in the daytime. All right, now, so why the C3 problem to start with? Well, possibly because there might be some evolutionary baggage. You know, if you think about a long, long time ago, Carbon dioxide was prevalent before photosynthetic organisms started to be on the earth. So carbon rubisco didn't have to worry about if there was oxygen present or carbon dioxide. So, you know, rubisco probably, since it evolved in a high carbon dioxide environment, is one reason it does what it does. Um, today, today is a big difference because today we have about 21% oxygen in our atmosphere and only about 0 0.03 carbon dioxide. So we really have to watch out for it. You know, and photorespiration is not a good thing for a plant. It can actually, as you see, it can drain away 50% of carbon fixed by the camel cycle on hot, dry days. So realize what this means to the plant. That eliminates their food, which is not good. All right, I hope this helps you a little bit. And we're done with photosynthesis. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.